Welcome to ATP Report. I'm Barry Nussbaum. Our very special guest today from across the pond in Great Britain is Anne-Marie Waters. She's the founder of For Britain, an up-and-coming conservative political party. She's an author, uh, she's a politician, and she's an expert in the Islamification of Great Britain. Anne-Marie, thanks for coming back. It's an absolute pleasure. Thanks for having me. So, it's my pleasure. Thank you. Uh, let's start off with uh, a follow-up to what we discussed earlier, which is you talked about these rape gangs where uh, young Pakistani men uh, befriend young British girls, um, often very, very, very young mm -hmm. teenagers, uh, entice them into coming with them, and they end up being gang raped and often taken away and sold into, a, I guess, a sex slavery ring. Mm -hmm. Uh, let's start with how common is this? Well, very. Uh, we don't know the exact figure. Some people have estimated, for example, there's a member of parliament, Sarah Champion, probably the only member of parliament who speaks out about this. She thinks that it could be as high as a million girls. Um, and it, it's definitely hundreds of thousands, uh, but some have suggested up to a million, and it certainly wouldn't surprise me. And remember, we're a country of 65 million. That's a huge number. That's an extraordinarily um, high number. Some, yeah, so it's definitely in the hundreds of thousands, but there's no way of knowing the exact figure. So you have a very prominent and um, high profile police force, both locally and nationally. Mm -hmm. Everybody's heard of Scotland Yard. Yeah. Everyone knows what MI5 is. Um, your politicians are in the news constantly, and your large cities where these rape gangs are. As you said, maybe a million girls have been sexually assaulted uh, in Birmingham and Rotherham. What are the police doing? I mean, genuinely nothing. Genuinely nothing. They are far more likely to cover it up than they are to prosecute it. And one of the things that's angering people so much across this country now, as these stories begin to come to light, is the, is the cover-up. People are almost as angry about the cover-up as they are about the rape because they didn't want to stir up racial tensions. That's their excuse. Uh, you know, they don't, want, they don't want to give credence to right-wing politics. That's, that's really what's driving it. The police is extremely left-wing uh, and they don't want right-wing speakers to be right about anything. So they cover this up. They've been covering it up for years and the country is just as angry about the cover-up as they are about the rape itself. So what would appear especially to me as a father of a young lady um a right and wrong um that's become politics in britain oh the the police are polit the police are political it's it's everywhere it's obvious it's everywhere all the time we've seen it just in the last couple of weeks we've had black lives matter protesting destroying property all over london and the police went on their knees in front of them. Uh, we had a guy, we had a, a counter protest the weekend gone with the right uh, there to protect Winston Churchill statue. A guy urinated uh, near Parliament, uh, not a very nice thing to do, but not the same as tearing up the city. And they put him in jail for 14 days to make an example of him. So on one side, the police get on their knees. On the other, they lock a guy up for 14 days just for peeing outdoors. Um, that's the difference, and it's, it's, it's constant across society. The police are political. So let's talk about an ancillary subject. Tell me what is the Muslim Council of Britain, and how influential are they? Very, unfortunately. Not quite as much as they used to be. The Labour government under Tony Blair uh, dissociated from them because of their extreme anti-Semitism. But they've managed to claw their way back in. They're basically the largest Muslim organization in the country. Uh, they are an umbrella group which incorporates mosques uh, from all over the country and they speak on their behalf. They're usually on mainstream media. They're usually given a platform whenever anything Muslim related happens. Uh, and they're given that platform to lie, to lie to the British public and uh, pretend that everything that goes wrong has nothing to do with Islam. Where, but luckily, the British public is not quite that stupid and knows they're being lied to. So you, you touched on an interesting subject that our viewers in the U.S. are very familiar with. What role is the mainstream media playing in all of this? Oh, 
to me it's the it's the it's the darkest to most toxic poison in the whole mix is the media they're the ones who keep this going they're the ones who present people like black lives matter to the public as a group of saints seeking justice they are not they are hardcore marxist anarchists they are it has nothing to do with black lives but the press continues to spread that lie. The press continues to lie that I'm a racist or a neo-Nazi simply for objecting to Islam. Because the press does that, the politicians pander to the press. So the politicians go along with what the press say because they want the right headlines. To me, the, the media is the, is the fundamental central poison in the mess that my great country now finds itself in. So now I have to ask you, since you mentioned you've been accused of it, what's your thoughts on the Nazi philosophy and what's your thoughts on racism? I don't know what racism is anymore. I'll just say that. Uh, I have been anti-Nazi since I knew what a Nazi was. Uh, I have taken a great deal of interest in, in the history of, of the Second World War and I know a great deal about Nazism. And one of the reasons I'm so horrified to hear the word Nazi thrown around so casually these days is people are, have no clue what the Nazis were or what they did and the evil that they inflicted upon our continent. Neo-Nazism is on the rise, as, as uh, anti-Semitism is on the rise, and it's not just on the rise among Muslims, it's on the rise among the far right and the far left as well. There's a huge, anti-Semitism is coming from various different places. I think it is, uh, along, with, along with the media, this anti-Jewish, anti-Semitic anti conspiracy theories are probably the most toxic things in politics at the moment. Um, I have been fighting anti-Semitism for as long as I can remember, and I will continue to. That's the reason the far right hate me. Uh, the far left hate me because I'm critical of Islam. And one of the reasons I'm critical of Islam is because of its anti-Semitism. And I can tell you, Islam is a lot more like Nazism than anything I've ever done or said. I'm a Democrat. I'm a civilized Democrat. Racism, as I say, I don't know what it is. Do I like individuals of every color? Absolutely. Do I judge people by their color? No. Uh, I, I don't, I, for that reason, I don't and never have considered myself racist, but I don't know what racist is anymore. I think it's anyone who's not a communist now is considered a racist. That, that genuinely, it genuinely seems to be what it is. Sounds like our country. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So what about, what's the future for the UK? This sounds horrible. I, gosh, I, I have no idea. I think we've got, I think the Labour Party may die out, which will be great. I'd love to see us come up and challenge the Labour Party. Um, but who knows? I mean, if you'd, if you'd asked me last year where we would be in June 2020, I would never have thought that our economy would have crashed thanks to a virus out of China. Uh, the government would have unprecedented power over us. The government at present has total control over our lives. Uh, and I never would have seen any of that coming. So I have faith in the British people. I think they will rise up and save the country, but it will probably be darker before the dawn. Oh boy. Well, sounds like my country, sad yes. to say. Yeah. Emory, how do people find out about what you're doing? Forbritain.uk is my party's website. Uh, I have a YouTube channel, AM Waters Media, uh, but the, the website's the best place to start. So that's Forbritain.uk, and you can find our policies, videos, uh, blogs, all sorts in there to find out about us. And we'd really appreciate any support that people can give us. Great. Thanks for joining us on ATP Report. Remember, you can always get all of our videos and our content for free on your cell phone. All you have to do is text the word TRUTH, T-R-U-T-H, and send it to 88202, 88202. You'll be subscribed for free, and you'll get the first three chapters of my new book because you asked for free. We never charge for content. For ATP Report, I'm Barry Newspun.